address your uh, affection for Bernie Sanders is that I did not support Bernie Sanders in 2016 because I frankly did not believe that he had a challenge to the American imperial project and that his socialism stopped at the water's edge. I did not feel that a Bernie Sanders, and even in 2020, I don't think that Bernie Sanders would have in any way diminished the American imperial project. And frankly, I don't think any president will be able to get in that position and to be able to do that. I, you may disagree, but I'd like to hear your response on that because I've never felt that him or his coterie of acolytes were particularly strong on the uh, of, on American empire and and what it means to challenge that that particular institution. You know, you're right. I mean, uh, far be it for me to say that Bernie is some sort of left wing anti imperialist. Quite the opposite. I mean, Bernie would, in that sense, be a better heir to Michael Harrington's legacy. Um, than uh, than any of the people in the DSA leadership now. You know, th that's for sure, that's true. On the other hand, the issue wasn't Bernie or what Bernie would do in office. The issue was, would a Bernie, or not Bernie, forget Bernie, let's not get held up on Bernie. Is it possible in the United States for some left social democratic force to appear that opens a path out of this death spiral between right-wing liberalism and the neo-fascists. Is it possible? I think that's the real question. Forget postmortems for Bernie because that didn't happen. I mean, he, he didn't open the path. Is it possible for somebody to open that path? And I think obviously it's possible. The question is, what's the base for that path? What's the base? You know, um, is there a base for that path? Is there a constituency? Um, are people going to go out? You can't run a left agenda in an imperialist country in the core only on creating social benefits for the population. You've got to run um, in a challenging way, talking about the fact that you need to create bridges in the United States rather than bases overseas. You know, you've got to create healthcare systems in the United States rather than spend money overthrowing governments you know, in, in South America and Thailand and so on. Um, you've got to run that kind of agenda, you know, and we just don't see a left social Democrat in the United States doing that. I mean, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez just oh, doesn't do that. You know, she just doesn't do that. She's in that sense a right-wing social Democrat, not a left social Democrat. Do you, do you think this... How do I word this? I feel Pascal and I have several conversations about off air conversations about our feelings on Alexandria Casio Cortez and that and that coterie, right? The uh, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, whoever else the media wants to call the squad. Um, I definitely understand that that's kind of a media creation, right? The the squad as mm -hmm. some sort of unit. Um. It kind of feels like maybe they're a little too online. Like outside of Donald Trump, they might be the most online political figures uh, that I've ever seen. And I wonder how that affects the way they even look at uh, policy. We have a friend that comes in on our Saturday show who actually work in uh, you know for a congressperson, and he actually gives us some some very juicy off air stories. But uh, there's something to be said about uh, the response to a lot of these, that younger group that you're bringing up. Because we, we agree, you know, Pascal and I agree, the, the foreign policy that they talk about is trash. That's the nicest way I could put it. Um, we're entering May tomorrow, and then comes June. And I, I don't mean to give anybody a lesson on the calendar, but I just want to say that... Um, in June, uh, the United Nations will consider a bill, I mean, you know, a vote on Cuba again. Mm -hmm. um, and you see, the issue is Cuba during this pandemic has, as you well know, sent doctors all around the world. All I mean, over the world. I did a webinar with doctors in many Caribbean countries, in Jamaica, in Belize, and so on. Talk to a young woman who's an emergency room doctor in a hot ward in Belize. Extraordinary brave. You know, I asked her, what do you miss? And she said, I miss my, I think, six-year-old child in Oriente in Cuba. 
and i said you know what he said i i talked to my child on video chat but i really miss and even when i go back i won't be able to see them for a while because i'll be in quarantine and so on extraordinary people you know these are the people that the administration of donald trump in january placed on the um terrorism state sponsors of terrorism list you know uh, the united states government in the middle of a pandemic decided to put cuba on the state sponsor of terrorism mm -hmm. uh, the united states government which is the largest arms exporter in the world and cuba of course exporting doctors so the united states decides to put cuba on the state sponsor of terrorism list the test case jason the test case for any squad or whatever one calls them is how they are going to stand up in the us congress to defend cuba and to attack this policy mr biden's press secretary uh, jen saki mm -hmm. uh, came out and said that cuba is not a high priority for mr biden it's not a high priority i mean are you kidding um when you were vice president at least obama tried to move some kind of humane policy on cuba at the very least biden should go back to obama i'm not asking biden to become a revolutionary you know but even on this jason even on this like even revert to obama where are the voices I mean, but brother but brother prashad i mean we played a clip that pascal uh yeah, don't don't oh, really. revert for Obama is uh, first of all Obama's pivot to Cuba was a direct reaction to the fact that Russia had forgiven Cuba's debt and that the the, the BRICS were actually pivoting to Latin and South America. There was no, no I'm not, I don't mistake what I'm saying. I'm not saying Obama's pivot to Cuba is a good thing or even a positive thing. I'm merely saying that even the imperialist liberal imperialist position of Obama is not being taken by Biden. Biden is preferring to sit on the trump policy which directly calls cuba a state sponsor they're not so where is these people where is talib where is um, elan omar where is aoc why aren't they standing up and saying what the hell why is cuba on the state sponsor of terrorism list cuba is sending doctors and so on see this is a important issue for the united states the united states has tried to suffocate 11 million people since 1959 the mm -hmm. test of your progressivism or whatever radicalism whatever you call it in the united states is whether you defend the cuban revolution's right to survive and i just don't see any of these squad people willing to come there or to say that the regime change policies against venezuela is out of out of line you know it's against everything that the world believes every year since the 1990s every single country almost has voted in the un to end the blockade of Cuba. I would like one of these, you know, left of center people to come <laughs> out there and say, let's join the rest of the world community and vote in the UN. Let's just have them say it. Let's just have them say, it. they just don't. So then I wonder, I scratch my head and say, where's the, which left wing person is sitting in Congress? I don't see them. Well, remember, uh, there's a clip of Joe Biden talking about not caring if Haiti falls into the ocean. You know, I just I feel like he just doesn't care. He has a very Trump esque view, in my opinion, of the Caribbean. That is Biden the only person. Biden is the only person who could say something more offensive about Haiti than Trump. To hear the rest of this show and more, you can find us at This Is Revolution Podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Podbean, Pandora, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Also, you can find a new episode every Wednesday on the Zero Books YouTube channel. This is Revolution.